Hi everyone, I pray this video finds you well. I just wanna share a few nuggets with you um, about marriage. We wanna look at the book of Ruth, Ruth 3 verse 13. But before we do that, I wanna give a little bit of a historic you know, background. Over here we saw that Naomi, I was actually directing Ruth on what to do to get Boaz's attention. And there's a reason be behind that because Ruth had experienced, you know, the death of her husband and she had faithfully served Naomi. And now Naomi wants to repay her. Naomi wants to be kind to her since she had followed her to her home, uh, people that she didn't know. Um, she wanted to settle her. She wanted God to favor her and settle her. And it wasn't just any marriage that Naomi was looking for Ruth. You know, she wanted a marriage that was redemptive, a marriage that was going to redeem um, Ruth, a marriage that was going to be in line with God's purpose and assignment uh, for Ruth and the people of Israel. And so she directs the path of, of Ruth in, in, in how to approach Boaz. Now, the backstory is there was a kinsman that was in line um, to marry Ruth um, but if you look at the text carefully, um, Naomi did not direct Ruth to that kinsman. She directed Ruth to the next in line. And so when we look at the book of Ruth 3 verse 13, we see that Boaz is responding to Ruth's request of marriage. And, and he's saying, stay here tonight. That's Ruth 3 verse 13. Stay here tonight and in the morning I will talk to him. The him here is referring to the kinsman that you know that is um, the rightful person or next in line to marry Ruth, uh, but because they had passed him, Boaz here is trying to follow protocol. He's trying to follow the procedures and the law that Moses put in place. That you know, if the brother is dead, of course, who is next in line to marry um, the wife that um, is alive. And so he's saying to, to Ruth right here, stay here tonight. I know, you know, the gesture, why you came to lie at my feet. And so I'm going to tell you, stay here tonight. In the morning, I'll talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you very well, I will allow him to marry you. But if he is not, then I, Boaz, will marry you. So the vision of the marriage, all they had not even happened, is for redemption. So I want to ask you, for the young girls out there who are seeking for a spouse to marry, for those that are divorced, seeking for a second chance to get married, make sure, make sure that your marriage is in alignment with God's purpose and plan for your life. You want to make sure that the assignment and the mandate that has been attached to your life and to attach to your spouse's life aligns is in perfect proportion to God's agenda. Because if we look at the marriage of Esther uh, to the king, it was for redemption. Esther said, you know, she fasted three days and three, three nights dry and said, you know, if I perish, I perish. That was a woman on assignment to make sure that God's agenda, God's uh, purpose, God's desire was going to be fulfilled through her union. We just looked at Boaz and Ruth. Um, we look at the marriage of Christ and even us as Christians. We are the bride of Christ and Jesus is our bridegroom. The reason why he came to die for us is that we will be reconciled with the Father. and But we are his bride. And that marriage that Jesus performed and is going to be finalized on his second coming is for redemption. And so the question I have for every young girl, every young woman, every young adult, every old woman, in your next phase of marriage, make sure you have tapped into the realm of the spirit to ask God who your spouse is supposed to be. You don't want to end up with the enemy because you will never fulfill the agenda of God. You will be in battle from day one to the end fighting with the enemy because when you marry, you know, there's a movie out there sleeping with the enemy. When you marry the wrong person, if God does not intervene, 
the agenda, the call, the mandate, the purpose of your marriage will not be fulfilled. Now, for those that are already married and you think that you married the wrong person, first of all, ask for repentance from God and ask God for a second chance to restore your marriage. Go through counseling, go through prayer and fasting, do what you physically need to do to get your marriage back in alignment with God's plan and do what you need to do spiritually to align with God's plan. Now, if one spouse does not, or one party does not want to play the part, you still need to ask God what you should do. And so today I just want to encourage somebody here that to marry the right person for your life, it will bring glory to God. It will bring beauty to the name of the Lord, knowing that you are in alignment with God's purpose and God's plan for your life. So when you get together, you start the mission of Christ. 